After two days of storms in West Texas, the threat shifts east today and the potential for severe thunderstorms is on the uptick. Let's talk about in today's edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Good morning, I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. It is the 4th of May 2023 and this is the Thursday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. The potential for thunderstorms increasing by early to mid-afternoon east of the surface dry line with the potential for large hail and damaging winds out of the most intense storms. In addition, we may see a bit of a heavy rain threat develop this evening as some of the storms begin to grow upscale into one or more thunderstorm clusters that then move east into portions of Central Texas and the Brazos Valley. Let's talk about it in the latest severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. This is going to be for this afternoon into this evening. A level 2 out of 5 risk on the severe weather outlook coverage scale. That means about a 1 in 5 chance of rowdy storms in your neck of the woods. The green level 1 zones, that's about a 1 in 10 to a 1 in 20 chance. We're saying uh, in terms of the time frame from 1 p.m. this afternoon through midnight this evening. Now around 1 p.m., maybe 2, we're going to start seeing thunderstorms fire up just east of that surface dry line across portions of northwest Texas, the big country down to the Concho Valley, the Edwards Plateau, but we may also see a few storms fire up a bit further east out by their lone summit portions of the hill country, central Texas, even the Brazos Valley. Once storms get going, the most intense storms could become severe quickly in a very unstable stable air mass. The potential for large to very large hail, the primary issue this afternoon, we could see hail sizes up towards tennis balls, hopefully not any bigger, but certainly can't rule it out. The potential for localized wind gusts of 60 to 70 miles an hour will also exist, and a non-zero tornado threat. The overall tornado threat today is very low, but not completely zero, especially when you're dealing with supercellular thunderstorms. And again, the overall time frame is through about midnight, although hopefully that will be as the final storms are winding down across portions of the Brazos Valley into the coastal plains and South Texas. Now we're going to take a look at the high resolution rapid refresh model. Now unfortunately with today's thunderstorms we're going to be dealing with a very complex situation. There's not a real big trigger mechanism to develop thunderstorms this afternoon, so once the cap weakens by late, or excuse me, by early afternoon, as we see temperatures get up into the middle 80s, we're just going to start seeing storms essentially pop up east of that dry line and out in the open warm sector. Uh, this means I can't really give you a great timeline on when you may see an individual thunderstorm hit your location compared to some other days where we have a set time frame on when they're going to form, where they're going to form, and then where they're going to move. Most storms today are going to tend to move off to the east northeast but some are going to move southeast and without a whole lot of wind shear aloft we may not necessarily see storms moving all that quickly today either uh once storms get going again the potential for large to very large hail the primary issue as we get towards dinner time into early this evening and mid-evening we may see some of these storms congeal into one or more clusters there's some indications in weather model data that may happen across parts of the hill country central texas and the brazos valley this evening if that occurs we could see some heavier rains develop as storms start to slow on down and drop a bunch of rain in addition to the potential for some wind and hail uh, high resolution weather models again are not going to be doing well with today's weather setup at all because they're all over the place this model run i'm showing you for example from the uh, 3 a.m. run of the high resolution rapid refresh model is pretty much looking different than the 2 a.m. The 2 a.m. looked different than the 1 a.m., etc. So don't expect models to be able to pinpoint when a storm is going to be on your specific location today and this evening. It's just one of these set situations. Situations? How about situations where things literally could just pop up? And then once they pop up, at least we'll be able to tell you with some notice where they're going to be going. But as you can see on this, we could see plenty of thunderstorms this afternoon. And again, with a late springtime environment, hail, strong winds and heavy rain and plenty of cloud to ground lightning are definitely going to be on the table. But we should start to see storms weakening a few hours after sunset. But we are going to have storms continuing into the late evening and overnight hours, especially where we see storms congeal into one or more clusters. 
and then the threat for some flash flooding could increase late this evening. So we head into tomorrow. The Storm Prediction Center has a severe weather threat across... Uh, I mean, kind of the same areas. We're going to shift it a bit southeast and concentrate it on portions of southern north Texas, the eastern Concho Valley, down towards the hill country. That's generally where right now the confidence is highest, where we could see a few severe storms tomorrow afternoon. Generally speaking, probably fewer in number than today, but they could be similar intensity with large to very large hail. Localized damaging winds, 60 to 70 miles an hour. Perhaps a tornado. The tornado threat's not going to be high because we're going to have pretty weak low-level wind shear. But when dealing with supercell thunderstorms and a boatload of instability in the atmosphere, you can never say never to spinny-spinny doom-doom issues. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then you can see that level one risk in the green extends across portions of the Rio Grande Plains up into the Edwards Plateau through South Central Texas, parts of the Hill Country, Central Texas, the Brazos Valley, up through North Texas, and Texoma. And again, how tomorrow plays out is going to be a, uh, a similar question to today. Whatever happens today in terms of rain, storms, whatever outflow boundaries we get left over, and then residual cloud cover tomorrow morning will dictate where we may or may not have severe weather issues by tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be one of these days where today plays a big role in how tomorrow sets up in terms of where and uh, how big. And then that game's just going to continue playing on forward as we get into the weekend. Uh, Here's Saturday. We've got a level 1 out of 5 risk for isolated severe thunderstorms east of the dry line again. Edwards Plateau, Concho Valley Hill Country, parts of Central Texas, the big country, North Texas, up into Texoma. And again, this is where we may see a couple of severe storms. I don't think we're going to see too many severe storms on Saturday. We may only have a few, but those that do form will be severe with big hail and localized damaging wind gusts. Again, most folks are not going to see storms with this on Saturday, probably at least severe storms the way it looks right now but we're gonna have to see how this is gonna set up after today and tomorrow play out so again a pretty busy couple of days perhaps in the severe weather slash storm department in terms of forecast rain totals from today through Sunday morning from the Weather Prediction Center. Again, here we go. Heaviest range, generally speaking, one to two inches across the hill country, central Texas, up into north Texas, southwest of DFW. Lighter rain amounts in the Edwards Plateau, east Texas, northeast Texas. And then you can see, for all intent and purposes, not really anything west of a line from Vernon to Abilene to San Angelo down towards Alpine. Maybe a little in the panhandle if we can get lucky um, after the last couple of days. But again, th how this rain map plays out, honestly, is going to depend on where these storms fire up and move over the next few days. So in all honesty, I mean, this is a regionalized forecast. Some folks are going to get nothing. Some may get four inches of rain. It's just going to be one of those situations where Mother Nature makes it difficult and we just have to use our eyes and experience to give you a shorter duration forecast. Unfortunately, I know you're going to be like, oh, the weatherman knows nothing. Well, probably, but you know what? You're watching me, aren't you? Anyway, in terms of the fire weather outlook, from the Texas A&M Forest Service today, moderate to locally high fire danger possible. Tomorrow, at high to very high fire danger is going to expand across the borderland into the Permian Basin, the Guadalupe Mounds, up into West Texas, the South Plains, the Rolling Plains, into western portions of the Texas Panhandle. And then on Saturday, uh, going to continue expanding all of the Panhandle, West Texas, the Permian Basin, into Big Bend National Park, Southwest Texas, all the way onto the borderland. So we may start becoming a bit more active in the wildfire department over the next couple of days as we start drying out and warming up across not only West Texas, but the entire state. Temperature-wise, today's going to be the coolest day we see in terms of high temperatures. That's going to be with 80s to lower 90s across Texas. In terms of tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be hot. We're going to see upper 80s to upper 90s across the state of Texas. Uh, a couple folks may be in the middle 80s, especially across far west Texas, but tomorrow is going to be hot. Some triple digits probably going to pop up in a couple of places. On Saturday, uh, same boat, upper 80s to upper 90s. Uh, obviously, by the time we get into late afternoon, anyone who ends up under a thunderstorm is going to cool off a bit, but you're also going to get hit on the head with hail if you're not careful. So 
Sunday, maybe a little cooler, middle to upper 80s to middle 90s across Texas. And then on Monday, well, we just go straight back up. Oh, that's not right. That's Saturday. David, 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 press your buttons correctly. In terms of Monday, same story. Uh, upper 80s, generally speaking, coolest across the border end of far west Texas, all the way up back into the middle and upper 90s. So uh, no big cool offs in the foreseeable future. Welcome to late spring, folks. We're starting to get a hint of that summer like weather. Hopefully we can get some more rain across Texas before summer arrives and we end up with triple digits for four months. But oh, you know what? We'll see what Mother Nature decides to do. So we'll have storm chasers out and about today across the state of Texas and probably parts of Oklahoma too. I'll be here with CC the Dank and we'll be providing severe weather coverage if it's necessary this afternoon. So we'll have live streaming storm chasing video on the Texas Storm Chasers YouTube channel. We'll also have video available on the Texas Storm Chasers mobile app and website. The next Texas Weather Roundup will be out bright and early by 7 a.m. Friday. Y'all have a good Thursday and may the 4th be with you.